Good morning, everybody. My name is Alex Barthet. I am here uh, in Ariella's place uh, to introduce the presentation. Today, we're going to talk about releases of lean and the one thing that your release needs to say to make sure that you protect yourself. Um, the great folks at Sunray put this presentation on, <clears throat> and I'm happy to be the presenter today. So let's get right into it. Um, you can ask any questions through the GoToWebinar chat box, which is on your screen. We will answer all the questions at the end. Uh, please do not include the names of any people or companies in your uh, questions. So let's talk about the agenda for today. We're going to talk about releases and the various forms that they come in. We will uh, talk about the one thing that you always want to make sure uh, is effective in each of your releases. And then we'll talk about conditional releases because that's a very important part of the release process, how to exchange a release for a check to make sure that you actually get the money when you give a release. And of course, we'll answer any questions that you have at the end, but submit them at any time through the GoToWebinar chat box. Okay, so let's start with the, <coughs> the release forms as they typically exist in the state of Florida. So the first thing you need to understand is that it depends if you are a general contractor or a subcontractor to understand what type of form should apply. Generally speaking, you want to give someone a narrow release when you get a check and you want to get a broad release when you give a check. Let me explain what I mean. If I'm a general contractor and I am paying a subcontractor, that means I am giving someone a check and they are giving me a release. What I would like that release to say is that it releases any and all claims that this subcontractor could ever have, any delay claims, any extended overhead and general conditions, any material price escalation, everything so that I know that when I pay the sub and they get their check, everything is wiped away and we start scrap from scratch other than retainage for the next month. Now the opposite is true if I'm a sub um, or if I'm a GC when I'm giving a, uh, giving a release to an owner to get a check. If I am giving someone a release and I am getting a check, I would like to get a check and give the least amount of rights away as possible. I'd love to be able to preserve a future delay claim, unexecuted change orders, um, or those types of things. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the statutory forms of releases here in the state of Florida. So in the statute, the lien statute, there exists uh, a form, simple waiver and release about upon progress payment, and then waiver and release upon final payment. So let's look at these. So it says here, the undersigned lien or in consideration of the sum of some amount of money, hereby waives and releases its lien and right to claim a lien for labor, services, or materials furnished through a specific date um, to the name of a company on the job of the name of the, the uh, owner on the following real property. And then it has one carve out. This waiver and release does not cover any retention or labor services or material furnished after the date specified. So very simple release. It releases lien rights and lien rights only in exchange for a certain amount of money and the th through a date of materials being furnished. Now, the final release form, which is in the statute, is nearly identical. It has a spot where you put in the money, except it has no through date. And the reason it has no through date is that it's effective the day you sign it. So if I sign a final release today, I am releasing all of my lien rights from today back. So let's take a look at another form. This would be considered a custom form. So the first thing you already notice is there's a lot more words. And generally speaking, more words means you're giving away more rights. So <laughs> let's take a look at this release. 
the undersigned in consideration of the sum of ten dollars. We'll talk about that in a minute. Why that's important. Um, is releasing not only lien rights, but all claims, change orders, works, materials, delays, fees, costs, expenses, damages, or sums for the labor services or materials furnished to the improvements. So this is a broad release. It's releasing pretty much every claim that could exist um, from this person that's signing this release. Interestingly, it also has a through date. So it's, gave, it's a release effective through the date that's in the release document. Um, so why is this release different? This release diff is different because if I were a party that was giving someone a check and getting a release, I would like it to look like this because then I know that I am actually getting um, a clean slate every time I pay. The significance of the $10 is that if I am giving someone a check and I am getting a release, I always would love to have the release say $10. And the reason I want the release to say $10 if I'm giving the check and getting a release is because then there's no argument about the amount of money that they were expecting. So for example, if they show up and they're expecting a $20,000 check, and I only gave them a $10,000 check. If the release says $10, there's not going to be much of an argument that they got some consideration. So the, the significance of $10 is that there is some consideration that's been given. Um, so they, they won't be able to come back and say, well, wait a second, I picked up a $10,000 check. It should have been 20. The legal argument is you got some amount of money and you agreed to release your rights through and including the through date for the amount of money you picked up. Now, the converse is always true if you are giving someone a release and getting a check. You would like that release to list the amount of money that you're expecting. So if you're expecting a $20,000 check and you go to pick it up and the release says $10, I would recommend you cross it out and you put $20,000. And the reason this is important is if you sign a release and you give it to someone and it says in exchange for $20,000 and they only gave you $10,000, you have a good argument to make later. Hey, I didn't get all the money I was expecting for this release. <clears throat> so some things to keep in mind. If you agree to a form of a release in your contract, meaning you sign a contract and it says, these are the forms as exhibit a, B, and C that we're going to use every time you uh, ask for payment, then those release forms are the contractual release forms you have to use. Also, if you agree in your contract and it says that you agree to use any form acceptable to the owner or the general contractor, you know, you, it becomes more complicated now to argue about the form of release. So what should you do when you are negotiating the contract? negotiate the forms of releases that are part of the contract. Do not just assume that those forms of releases are going to be um, acceptable. You can argue and say, no, 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 I don't agree to those forms of releases. I want another form of release. One of the things that we recommend when we review contracts for clients um, is if we want to push back on the form of release, we say, and the parties agree that the forms of releases found in Chapter 713 may be used in exchange for payment each month. And those are the very simple release forms that I told you at the beginning of the presentation. <clears throat> so what is the one thing that you need to always do? You need to make sure that you match the through date with the dollars you're getting. The through date is the effective date of the release. If you remember when we looked at those releases, every one of them but the final uh, release had a through date. The reason the through date is important is that through date is the date is, is the uh, date that the release is effective through and that you're releasing your rights through. So for example, if you show up to pick up a, a check um, and you are expecting $20,000 which equals the amount of work that gets you through the end of the month. 
if they only give you a ten thousand dollar check but they expect a release through the end of the month you have a problem and that problem is, is that if you accept ten thousand dollars in exchange for a release for through the end of the month you will be giving up those rights because it's not the dollars that control the release it's the through date so the through date needs to match the dollars you're getting so if you're expecting 20,000 and they're only going to give you 10,000 then you need to change the through date maybe it's not the end of the month maybe it's the fourth of the month or the 22nd of the month but you need to make sure that those two things match and always know that it's the through date that is going to control not the amount of money we have clients come to us and say well what i showed up they were supposed to give me 20,000 they didn't they only gave me 10,000 so I still am, am entitled to the other 10,000, right? And my answer is no, unfortunately not, because you signed a release through the end of the month. So you gave up all of your rights to the money through the end of the month. So as I said, you need to either change one or the other. So if the through date doesn't match the dollars, then you need to change the dollars. If the dollars and through date don't match you, then you need to change the through date. Pick one of the two, but they have to match according to your uh, billings. <clears throat> so we always get questions about conditional releases. Um, what is the conditional release? How to use it? And why is it important? A conditional release is a statement in the release that makes it expressly conditioned on you receiving the payment. Um, so here's an example sentence that you can add to any release. Notwithstanding anything to the contrary, this waiver and release is conditioned upon and not effective until the undersigned receives paid funds of blank. So if you're expecting a $10,000 check, then you would write $10,000 in there. You would write this into the release. And now this release is conditioned on you actually receiving the $10,000. And this is important because if you give someone a release in advance of you actually receiving the check, what happens if you never get the check? Well, if you never get the check, unfortunately, you've given up your rights, potentially, if the release was not conditional. Um, what if you exchange it for a check and the check is no good? If you have any doubt that the check is good, you need to make the release conditioned on the clearance of the funds as this statement uh, has. Now, sometimes we see releases that are titled conditional. So at the top, it'll say conditional uh, waiver and release. But when you read the document, it doesn't have any of the conditional language in it. The mere inclusion of the word conditional in the title does not make it conditional. You need to make sure it has conditional language in it. And obviously, if you're going to put the conditional language, you can't say that the release is a $10 release because you're not conditioning it on $10, you're conditioning it on some other substantial sum of money. So don't put $10 in the conditional, in the blank where you're expecting the funds that you're, that you're um, hope to get. Now, for those of you that use Sunray, you probably already know this, for those of you that don't, um, Sunray has all of the standard release forms in their system so that they automatically generate for you every time you get payments including conditional waivers. So the conditional language I gave you is in the conditional waivers that are generated from the Sunray release system. Very convenient. So once you enter all your information into the um, system to generate your notice to owner, all of that information is immediately available every time you generate a release. <clears throat> now, sometimes you may have to sign paper releases. We've generated this, docu uh, this tool which is completely free. If you go to makemeconditionalstamp.com, fill in your information, we will send you this physical release stamp that you can keep on your desk. So if you get a release that you have to sign and you wanna make it conditional, you just stamp it with the stamp we send you. It has the conditional language with a blank. You write in the amount of the um, money you're expecting to get. And with this stamp, you will now make any release that you get conditional. Again, go to makemeconditionalstamp.com and we'll send you that stamp completely free. 
so you can use it and make sure that you have no doubt whatsoever that you are going to make your releases conditional. So with that, does anybody have any questions? Um, let me see here. We don't have any questions now, um, but here is my contact information. Again, Alex Barth, that board certified in construction law. You can call me, you can send me an email. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, additionally, for those of you um, that use Sunray, it would be great if you could leave us a review. Just point your phone right at this QR code and it'll take you right to the review page and leave Sunray a review. Um, I'm not affiliated with Sunray. I'm an independent attorney, but many of our clients use Sunray and are extremely happy with their online system and their very friendly support. So if you're not using them, you should give them a try. Uh, we do these webinars every month, uh, completely free, takes about 20 minutes. Our next one is, oh shit, I blew my deadline. Now what? We're going to talk about the things you can do if you miss a lean or notice deadline um, so that you can still preserve the rights that you have. Uh, that's on March 8th at nine o'clock. And then on April 11th, we have three contract provisions to avoid at all costs. We'll talk about some very specific contract provisions you should be aware of to make sure you don't lose your rights. You can sign up for these and all the future webinars at sunraynotice.com forward slash education. Thank you very much for all of your time. Again, my contact information is here. Feel free to send any questions that you may have that you think of afterwards. Otherwise, have a great day.